Greenwich Village is mostly a state of mind. For the Sapokanakan Indians, it was a happy hunting ground, and it still is, although the Indians are gone, because happy hunting grounds are places of the spirit. It was here that one free soul, Tom Paine, gave America the crisis, and another discovered broccoli on Bleecker Street. The village is an island of color and calm, lying somewhere between Wall Street and Union Square. In 1916, the painter John Sloan declared it an independent republic, and it is that, self-reliant and not easily influenced. Age doesn't matter here, because most who live here wonder and search. Some are poets, some prognosticators, but in the village, everybody's young inside. Poets and philosophers have always flocked to the village. Here Joe Gould wrote, in the winter I'm a Buddhist, in the summer I'm a nudist. Painters flock here too, and all schools of art, abstract expressionism, romantic realism, drippers and splatterers, the best and the worst can be found here. This is the circle. On weekdays, it's a wading pool for village kids. But on Sundays, the water is turned off and the circle becomes a meeting place for guitarists, bongo and banjo players, villagers on a stroll, folk singers, and tourists. The circle is a good place to meet old friends and make some new ones. Washington Square Park is the center of things on Sunday afternoons. The park in the past 200 years has been a dueling field, a potter's field, a parade ground, an execution ground, and a health resort. Today it's just a park with trees and benches and seesaws, and that's the way the village likes it. Twice yearly for over half a century, there have been hundreds of artists exhibiting in the world's largest outdoor art show. Some are fine, many are not. But if you say you're a painter, and you've got the paintings to prove it, you're welcome to try them out before thousands of critical eyes and an occasional well-filled purse. In the village, everybody knows everybody else, more or less. 